Hello, everyone. We're going to start now. So thank you all very much for being here. My name is Antoine Parmentier. I'm uh, the general manager. Uh, sorry, I'm <laughs> not the general manager. I'm the external relations manager for SAT Connectus. I definitely do not want to be the general manager. I think my job is actually a lot more fun. And uh, I'm welcoming you here to uh, the How to Boost My PhD webinar. We're really, really excited with uh, Adal, Semia, and Connectus to have you here and uh, to talk with you for the next hour, hour and a half and so, so. So here are the people who will be presenting today. There's me. There's uh, Yves Gendreau, who's working with uh, Semia as a startups manager, and uh, the two wonderful people from Adal who are going to introduce themselves very shortly. Let me just give you the rules of the webinar for today. We recommend Chrome as a web browser. We can probably use others, but we checked on it. Um, we ask that you keep your microphones muted for now. Uh, if you have any issues, please ask them in the chat. We have people who are checking it regularly and will answer you probably in the chat by private message as well. And likewise, if you do have questions, uh, we will definitely do our best to answer them, more likely at the end of the seminar, once we've had the time to talk about uh, a little bit everything already. Uh, we'll select as many questions as you ask as possible to answer. Uh, and as much as possible, please ask them in the chat so we can uh, select them and play them in the best possible order. Uh, also, there will be a replay coming after the webinar that will be accessible for everyone. So now I'd like to like um, to have Luca introduce uh, himself and Adan as well as Marvei. Yes, so thank you very much. So I will be very short in order to jump straight to the, to the, to the um, seminar. So I'm Luca, I'm the president of Adal. Uh, which is the Association of Doctoral Candidates and Doctors of Alsace. Um, our association is uh, based in Strasbourg and uh, it proposes events about career development and the social events for PhD candidates and doctors. Where, among the events that uh, we propose, there are uh, events where you can explore the possible career paths after your PhD and this event is, uh, is one of them. We also promote the inclusion of uh, foreign students through events that are centered around uh, French-English language exchanges. And uh, we can also help mediate in case of conflicts uh, uh, in the relationship within the advisor and the PhD candidate. <coughs> I will leave in the chat uh, the links uh, to our social media and our email in case you need and you would like to contact us. And um, in the near future, we are organizing an event about time management and a trip to Champ de Feu. And other activities are being planned, so you can keep uh, updated uh, by following us on our social media. Uh, I would like also to say that these events are open to members and non-members of uh, our association as well. So I would like to conclude by thanking uh, Connectus for involving our association to, in this event and uh, for collaborating with us. Uh, I wish you all to enjoy the webinar and uh, thank you Antoine and uh, I will see you later for the Q&A session. Well, thank you very much, Luca and Adal, too, for being such an important part of it. So we know that you as PhD students are, of course, extremely invested in your PhD. It's a very important part of your life. Uh, it will hopefully drive what you will do later. But what you will do later is, for many of you, probably still open to questions. Maybe some of you will work in research. Uh, maybe some of you will not, for many reasons. Uh, and one of the ways that you can uh, prepare your future is to use the discoveries, scientific discoveries that you will make during your thesis to turn them into a technology or an innovation that could then reach market with the help of many actors, including us, uh, interest investors, and therefore uh, create a job for you, either in the form of a company that you will join if they want to uh, integrate what you have discovered, or by creating a startup around your discoveries. So I'll start with a very brief um, introduction of what is Connectus. Uh, Connectus basically uh, connects, hence the name, uh, researchers from Alsatian Public Lab, UNISTRA, UHA, CNRS, INSERM, all the research infrastructure in Alsace, and companies the world over, also mostly in France, Alsace, and around, and also helped to create startup with uh, incubators such as Semia. 
In a little more details, we are what's called in the tech transfer world, a TTO, tech transfer organization. Uh, we are here to accelerate tech transfer for six structures that you see on the right, that normally uh, as PhD, you are members of a lab that is managed by one of those six structures. Even though we're a private company, they're all our shareholders. So we really work at the service of researchers to help them bring the innovation closer to market. So I will give you a little video to understand uh, a little better and uh, probably a little more fun than what I'm talking about to let you see what we do for researchers. Right, so there you have it. That's how Connectus can help researchers. Now, just obviously you as PhD are already researchers. You are not already um, lab members in the sense of drawing a direct salary from the lab, having a full-time job with the lab. So there are some specific conditions and that's the whole point of mature your PhD that we will go into much more detail uh, in a little bit to see how you as a two, third, third and second year PhD student can still benefit from connected services as much as possible. But to summarize, what we do is we help protect the researcher's discoveries. We can finance the innovative project that have market potentials, therefore adding economic value to the research and guiding the researchers to the industrial world to either create a startup or uh, transfer that innovation to a company. The advantages are twofold. It brings money back to the researchers and the lab, and it also um, creates more demand from the industrial world and therefore more interesting research challenges. Now, just final word on this, we only work with uh, researchers who want to. We don't uh, force anything when it comes to research. It's only on a voluntary basis, but it's always really, really interesting because it opens up the research results in a very interesting direction. So very briefly that we have a bunch of expertise that obviously not research at Connectus, that's your job. We are more support for intellectual property, patents, now how and other means of protecting your inventions, investing in the innovation pro 
project so that we can transfer the technology. And what we mean by that is that you still, um, the researchers and the universities and the labs still own the technologies most of the time, but we grant a license to use it for the startup or the company. And if it's a startup, normally it's what we call a deep tech startup because it's a, often a disruptive technologies. Not always, but most of the time, we're going to work in quantum com computing, we're going to work in advanced screen techs or uh, human sciences fields that lend themselves to that. As you will see a little later, we have a couple of examples. And we help a few, of course, to find the right companies uh, and potentially the right uh, startup managers for you to work with. Uh, lastly, don't forget, keep in touch with us. We are very active on LinkedIn, Twitter. You will see lots of news of what we post. So we strongly recommend that you go take a look. And uh, if you want to subscribe, that's even better. So you can really stay up to date with the uh, Connectus information and news. So now I'm going to uh, pass the microphone over to Yves Gendreau from Connectus and Semia, who's going to uh, introduce you with an interesting uh, story of a startup. Hello everyone, uh, thank you uh, Anton for, for this introduction. Um, so uh, first of all, uh, just a quick word uh, to introduce myself. Um, so my name is, is uh, Yves Gendreau and I work for uh, both uh, Connectus as a startup manager and also at uh, Semia, uh, which is uh, the public, research, um, the public um, incubator. Uh, then uh, I can explain uh, you later what uh, what we do. Uh, so after my thesis, I had the chance uh, to become a teacher researcher at uh, ECAM school and uh, in a Cube laboratory. Uh, but after five years, I became uh, bored uh, doing the same lecture and uh, practical work, uh, uh, always doing administrative stuff and searching uh, for funds. Uh, so in parallel, I had uh, an entrepreneurial experience, and uh, this is why I joined uh, SatConnectus and Senia five years ago uh, to support the researcher in their uh, entrepreneurial uh, quest from the lab to the, the fundraising. Uh, so here today, we will focus um, on uh, uh, a story, the story of uh, Brighton Diagnostic, which is a startup coming from uh, Connectus and is uh, actually uh, incubated uh, at Senia. And more specifically, uh, at the Andrei Krinchenko, the Dr. Andrei Krinchenko, the scientist uh, behind this, uh, this technology. So first, um, what is the value proposition uh, of this, uh, this startup? Uh, so Brightson uh, Diagnostics aims at developing and commercializing uh, a new generation of kits for screening, diagnosis, and surveillance for patients. So what it means, in other words, uh, you all know uh, what is a PCR test uh, with the sanitary uh, crisis uh, today. So imagine uh, the same thing uh, um, of a PCR test, but uh, without amplifying uh, the RNA or the DNA uh, in a laboratory, but uh, directly uh, to mark the chain, the DNA, the RNA chain with fluorescent marker that can directly be read, uh, like uh, the test, for example, uh, but gives a very good result. Uh, so it gives a cost-effective solution a uh, lot more faster than the today PCM. So what, this is the, the value proposition of, uh, of a Brighton diagnostic. But uh, beyond the technology, there are the, the team. So uh, Brighton Diagnostic is uh, today a team of three people. So three co-founders, um, it is a mixed team uh, between uh, scientists and business uh, people. So Andre, Dr. Andre Krenchenko, uh, is the lead scientist uh, on, the, on the technology of the technology. Uh, it is a, he is a research director at CNRS and uh, also uh, Andra Reich, uh, which is a teacher researcher on the same lab um, of uh, Andre. And uh, there is John, John Folke, uh, which is a senior businessman that has more than uh, uh, 18 years uh, of experience uh, in IVD uh, commercialization at, uh, for example, uh, BioRad and, uh, you know, uh, Biosynex uh, company. Uh, and uh, let's see um, how they begin working together. And uh, let's uh, first focus on Andre and on the uh, science uh, part of the project. 
So all came uh, from uh, 2015 um, with the ID. Um, it's come from the observation that there's a lack of simple and direct methods for detecting a very low uh, concentration of nucleic acids, uh, which are uh, very important uh, disease biomarkers uh, in molecular diagnostics. So all the, the projects come from this ID. And, uh, uh, Andre uh, write uh, a first uh, ERC that he won. Uh, so it is, is a ERC for um, uh, those who don't know what it is. It's a public uh, funding uh, research program uh, that comes from the European Research Council. Only 10% of the project are funded. And uh, Andre uh, uh, obtained uh, more than 2 million uh, euro for five years uh, research program uh, with this uh, application. Uh, so we jump in time and uh, we came at uh, 2017 uh, with the breakthrough uh, on science, um, with the amplification uh, of the, the marker by uh, some we call nano antennas. Uh, based on ultra bright uh, fluorescence uh, molecules that can be fixed on the on the RNA and the, the DNA. So this is really the breakthrough to the to the technology that comes in this uh, ERC. Uh, so so um, then uh, moving in time and uh, we came uh, with the um, the connectus parts. Uh, so in 2019, uh, we invest uh, money on the project with a project called Nano Antenna that comes from the breakthrough of the technology. So we came with a six month plus uh, 18 months uh, um, investment uh, for 40, uh, 500 kilo euros. Uh, and in parallel uh, with this investment um, to boost the technology, to put the, the technology in a more advanced state, um, uh, we have the, the science team uh, that uh, published a lot with uh, three major publications in Nature Photonics, in JAX, uh, for, for the, uh, who knows this, uh, this review, and also a German one. And uh, in the science parts, they also uh, produce two proof of concept of the technology uh, in the lab uh, during this, uh, this uh, year from uh, 2019 to 2020. Um, in parallel, uh, recently, um, Andre also obtained a, a prize of the Science Academy, um, uh, which is a, a great, uh, a great uh, prize to, to be uh, known as a, as a scientist for, for this uh, work. So this was the, 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 the science part, but uh, regarding the business part for this company now. So I also put Connectus here because Connectus work on the business part of the, of the, of the project also. Uh, it's um, it's uh, beginning uh, on 2020 uh, to have the idea to go to a startup with this technology. And uh, for this, uh, we develop uh, with uh, the help of uh, Région Grand Est and uh, two other sites that uh, operate in this region. Um, and we created a, a program that is called uh, Team to Market. Uh, it is a web page where uh, uh, CEO uh, can um, can candidate uh, to project that we put on this website. Uh, so for this project, Nano Antenna, we put the, the project on the on the website, and we have the, uh, several uh, applications. And uh, we have uh, first the the meeting with John, the, the future CEO of the the company, and um, we discussed a lot. And uh, later in this year, um, uh, we organized a meeting between John and Andre and all the team. They, came, they began uh, working together and uh, to finally uh, conclude a deal uh, to have a, a completion of the team and uh, a match between uh, this CEO with the, the business parts and uh, the, the two scientists uh, on, the, on the project. So John uh, works on the first business plan, uh, plan this year. Uh, and uh, all this uh, goes to the introduction of the project at uh, the Semia Incubator, 
on this project directly on time in Semia and don't pass all the starting uh, courses that we can do uh, on, on the incubator, but directly in uh, uh, on the incubation process at, uh, at Semia in the end of 2020. And we begin the, the support uh, at Semia uh, in a hard way because uh, we directly uh, support the, the emerging uh, company uh, in the iLab contest which is the, the number one uh, contest in France uh, organized by BPI, the innovation contest uh, with cash price and also a big, uh, a big uh, focus uh, on the project in a national and international um, way. Uh, so um, the chance that is uh, that uh, finally uh, with the, the support and all the work done by the team, um, uh, Brighton Zenistic uh, became an iLab winner this year with the, the support and um, all this goes to the, the launch of the startups in the end of 2021 with also the technology licensing from Connectus to uh, Brighton Zenistic. And we are today in 2022. Um, and what, uh, what is here today, uh, we have a good, good media coverage uh, for this project uh, in uh, local uh, media, like uh, Dernier Nouvelle d'Alsace, but also in national uh, specialist uh, press, like uh, Biotech um, Info, but also in more generalized uh, press, like uh, Madinas, which is very good for the project. Uh, and also for us, but um, they also secure uh, two major uh, clinical partners to do the, all uh, the cancer studies for the for their technology, which are the IRCAD and the, the ICANS uh, here at Strasbourg. And we finish the, the timeline with uh, the first product, uh, which uh, will be on the market if all is good. Uh, this year, uh, on the end of 2022, and uh, next projects on uh, on the 2023 uh, year. So, uh, just to resume the, the timeline of the support, uh, which is very important that we are um, an ecosystem which can give uh, you on the project uh, a support regarding the, the stage of, uh, of your project. So, we already speak, uh, Antoine speak about Connectus and we, we focus on the research part and the maturation process of the technology. Uh, I don't put here, it's, uh, uh, it's not a uh, volunteer, but uh, we, you can also contact Pepi Tetena, which is the um, more uh, student part of the entrepreneurship program uh, that can help you to structure your entrepreneurship program uh, before joining Connectus, for example, or in parallel. Uh, after that, uh, you came at uh, you can came at Semia for more specifically the creation and the market access uh, on your company, uh, and you can continue this process uh, by the next steps with the acceleration process, for example, at uh, Grand Sinov, which is an innovation uh, agency uh, here in Région Grand Est. So today, Brighton Diagnostic is on the middle um, of the support of Semia, uh, so it's. Uh, when you're an half that uh, the company join uh, our support and uh, we have a lot to do uh, more for this project, uh, I'd say. Uh, so I will end here the, this presentation, but uh, just what did we learn with the, this, uh, this project? Uh, so the three take home messages that can give uh, you. So first, the acceptability. Uh, your project uh, need to, to be accepted by academics, but also on the market. So we have seen here with Brighton Diagnostic, two ERC uh, one, so a very good uh, scientist, uh, scientific uh, project, and also uh, validated by the market. And with the COVID situation, uh, this boost uh, clearly the, the project to be uh, rapidly uh, in the market. So, uh, but not only, uh, there are also the, the oncology field that can be developed. Uh, so the second point is uh, to have a complementary team. See, if you are only a scientist, uh, you is not the best at dealing with the business part. So this is what we suggest is to uh, to have um, a team of well-known scientific, but also with uh, a more experimented uh, business uh, people, uh, like for example uh, the CEO, that can 
uh, more easily open the, the market uh, to, to boost uh, the, 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 the company. And uh, finally, uh, of course, it's to have enough money <laughs> because if you don't have this, you can uh, not go further uh, on, the, on the company. Uh, and it's uh, important to survive during a long development time before uh, obtain the first uh, money that come from the market. So again, two years here for, for this project, the maturation of Connectus, the high lab price, uh, and also they, uh, they obtain uh, different grants uh, from the region grant test to, to set up the, the company here. So this is uh, what uh, concludes my, my pitch. Uh, if you have uh, any questions, please ask them uh, in the, the chat and we will answer with Antoine at the end uh, of the, the webinar. And don't hesitate to contact me directly by, by email if you have uh, also another question regarding Connectus or getting a seminar and the process of incubation. Thank you. Thanks, Yves. Now, moving on to the, the next part. It's a little similar. We, it's going to be another story uh, of another startup, but this one is quite different from the previous one, you'll see. So first, let's get started with a little video indeed to uh, get you into the topic. Sorry. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's to present Benoit Ribon's research and uh, no. my show your PhD application. Je m'appelle Benoît, je suis docteur en géographe au laboratoire Imageville Environnement de l'Université de Strasbourg. Moi, je travaille sur la question euh, du métabolisme des territoires. En fait, c'est reprendre l'image biologique d'un organisme avec ses besoins pour fonctionner, et bien, réutiliser la même image sur un territoire. Donc, qu'est-ce que l'économie d'un territoire a besoin comme ressources pour fonctionner Et puis de l'autre côté, quels sont nos rejets vers l'environnement et nos exportations En fait, euh, beaucoup des études qui ont été menées précédemment, précédemment euh, étaient réalisées à la main. Et donc ça m'a donné l'idée aussi d'aller vers une plus grande automatisation euh, du processus de traitement des données. C'était un dossier effectivement qui demandait de, de présenter à la fois son, son projet et puis peut-être aussi d'insister sur ses, ses compétences personnelles. Donc l'exercice est un peu original, mais c'est un peu de se, de se lancer des fleurs pour montrer pourquoi on est capable de, de porter ce, ce dossier. À travers le projet, il y a plusieurs perspectives qui, qui sont intéressantes pour moi. À la fois, on va dire un accompagnement technico-administratif, notamment en lien avec la propriété intellectuelle. Euh, c'est loin d'être mon quotidien, donc c'est profitable. Et puis derrière, effectivement, la perspective de pouvoir avoir un, un post-doctorat qui me permettra vraiment de, de travailler de manière un peu plus opérationnelle sur, sur mon projet. Moi, ce que j'espère, c'est que bah, le logiciel que je développe pendant, pendant cette thèse, que les utilisateurs le trouvent pertinent et qu'ils l'utilisent pour vraiment améliorer cette connaissance de nos territoires. Est-ce que vous êtes prêts euh, à vous lancer sur le, le lancement d'une start-up ou, ou similaire euh, pour justement monter un projet économique Et si la, la réponse est oui et que si pendant votre projet de thèse, vous pensez effectivement que ça peut donner lieu à une application concrète, bon bah je pense que c'est les, les critères qui sont suffisants pour, pour candidater au, au projet. Donc ça mérite de, de se lancer. Enfin moi c'est sur ces critères que j'ai décidé de me lancer et bah, je suis là aujourd'hui. Donc c'est probablement que c'était les, les bons critères. Ouais. Uh, the video is in French, so I hope you all uh, understood it, but I'm going to go back a little bit first into what brought Benoit to apply to mature PhD and then what his startup is about. You may have noticed he comes from human sciences, geography. So that's already an interesting example because, yes, we do a lot of hard sciences, biotech, chemistry, but not only. Human sciences have all the place in the mature your PhD program and more generally in the tech that Connectus can promote. Uh, so that's really an interesting example of it. Uh, one other very interesting thing about Benoit is he's had many lives. Um, disclaimer, me too. I've been working at Connectus for 10 years now, but uh, before that I did lots of things. And we know now that uh, professional lives that are just straight university, to working to a company your whole life are pretty much over uh, and that many of you 
will go places and maybe change and then go into a dead end and have to change again and that many times over. Uh, what's interesting with Benoit is that he did it already. He studied with masters of engineering and eco council, but that was a little too early. No, stay back, please. Stay, stay in. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Hello. We'll, we'll go on the other one after. But um, he started with does, uh, but it was a little too early. So he created his own job in teaching math to kids. But then he decided to went back to a thesis that he did in conjunction with ADEM, which is a public agency, but that already brought him closer to the professional uh, life. And uh, he realized early on that data would be really important for environmental issues. So that drove his thesis into a more quantitative side as opposed to just qualitative data. Uh, he applied to material PhD just out of curiosity because if found it interesting. He didn't necessarily have it in mind to create a startup, but then he really wanted to apply his thesis results into the real world, which is really interesting because instead of just having a thesis that uh, will help other researchers maybe later on, he could keep uh, his hands in it and uh, keep making it grow in a way with the startup that he had. So now we can move on to the next slide. It's really, really dense, but it gives you a little idea of uh, everything he did already, which honestly is quite a lot, you know, especially with internships as well uh, and going back and forth between studies, um, corporate work and uh, private work uh, is something that is now really more and more common. And honestly, when we look at mature your PhD applications, uh, that is not a drawback, quite the opposite, because we also know that people who uh, will create startup needs to be, well, obviously quite self-starters and be autonomous. So all those are really important and they also help structure uh, who you can be. Now, if all you ever did in your life is go from master's to your PhD, that's fine too. Maybe you are fantastic as well. All we're saying is that we're really open to all ways of life for that. You can move on to the next one. So now his startup basically started as the idea that there was more and more need for territorial environmental data, i.e. that collectivities, but also companies need to understand better uh, social economic impacts of, of environmental actions and the other way around. However, many of the studies were often done by hand, meaning that you were just accumulating some data, putting them yourself in kind of an Excel spreadsheet and going from there. It was very, um, artisanal, you would say in French. And his idea was to really create a strong algorithm uh, that could lead to a much better data sets and therefore to help decision making. That led him, for example, to the, uh, the mapping of analysis of bike path and the impact on daily commutes. That seems obvious and those are topics that we talk about a lot, but it's interesting to know that until he really worked into it, most of those studies were almost instinctive rather than quantitative. So we can move on to the next slide. And he's going to explain in a little more detail 180 seconds very exactly what his uh, thesis topic and therefore his startup topic is all about. Attention, Benoît Ribon, il a besoin de votre soutien. Du laboratoire Image Ville Environnement, le live, le CNRS Université de Strasbourg. Comment intégrer l'étude du métabolisme urbain et régional dans la gouvernance territoriale Deux points. L'enjeu des données et leur restitution. J'ai un animal de compagnie, une petite chatte qui s'appelle Chiara. Chiara, je lui donne tous les jours environ 50 grammes de croquettes. Une fois ingérées, ces croquettes vont se transformer dans son organisme et libérer les nutriments et l'énergie qu'elles contiennent pour lui permettre de rester au top de sa forme. À la fin du processus, il reste quelques déchets que Chiara évacue sous forme de petites crottes. La quantité d'aliments ingérés, la façon dont ils se transforment dans l'organisme et ce qui en ressort, tout ça... C'est ce qu'on appelle le métabolisme d'un organisme. Mais moi, je ne suis pas biologiste. Je n'étudie pas les organismes vivants. Je suis géographe et j'étudie des territoires, des villes, des régions, des pays. Et même si ces territoires n'ont pas grand-chose à voir avec Chiara, ils ont, eux aussi, 
un métabolisme. Imaginez une ville comme un gros animal dans lequel nous serions tous en quelque sorte des globules. Et bien, Pour que ce gros animal ville imaginaire puisse fonctionner, c'est-à-dire pour que l'économie tourne, nous devons mobiliser des ressources, des aliments, du bois, du pétrole, des métaux, etc. etc. Nous ne mangeons évidemment pas vraiment toutes ces ressources, mais nous les consommons, les transformons et les rejetons, tout comme Chiara consomme, transforme et rejette ses croquettes. Si je veux savoir ce que Chiara consomme, ce n'est pas très difficile. Il suffit de peser ses croquettes avant de les lui donner et d'espérer qu'elle ne mange rien d'autre en cachette. Mais pour savoir ce que consomme ou rejette un territoire, la tâche est autrement plus complexe et il y a beaucoup, beaucoup de données à rassembler. La production agricole, l'extraction minière, les rejets vers l'air, vers l'eau, la mise en décharge, le transport de marchandises et bien d'autres. Au total, toutes matières confondues, ce sont plusieurs dizaines de millions de tonnes qui circulent chaque année sur un territoire comme l'Alsace. Ainsi, mon travail est de développer les méthodes qui rendent plus simple et plus facile l'étude du métabolisme de nos territoires en permettant de rassembler et d'exploiter toutes ces données. Pour cela, mon ordinateur est un serviteur très utile. Après avoir identifié le type d'information qu'il faut manipuler et développer un programme dédié, je suis désormais capable de gérer de grandes quantités d'informations. Cela me permet de répondre plus facilement à différentes questions à partir de données brutes, qui consomme ou rejette quoi, où, quand et en quelle quantité. Je serai un diététicien qui veut mettre Chiara au régime, je me poserai les mêmes questions. Mais ce n'est pas Chiara qu'il faut mettre au régime, ce sont bien nos territoires qui consomment trop de ressources, en tout cas plus que ce que la planète ne peut renouveler. Ainsi, avec mon travail, j'espère créer les outils qui permettront à un nouveau métier d'exister, une sorte de diététicien du territoire qui trouvera le régime adapté pour que notre économie puisse continuer à fonctionner durablement. There you have it. So now that explains really what it does. There again in French, so I hope you all can understand. Um, one other thing that I want to mention uh, about Thomas, so I'll start basically by the end of my conclusion, is that he told me, and that was very interesting, that one reason he decided to create a startup is because he wanted to keep control over his work-life balance. And being his own boss in a way, or at least participating in a startup in which he had uh, created, he had really brought the tech, uh, was a way to do that. Because even if you're not the CEO of um, the startup that your research may lead to, you will have a lot of control over what happens. That's also one reason, for example, that where he moved from Strasbourg to Angoulême, because for many personal reasons that I'm not going to get into, uh, he decided to do that move. That was possible because of a startup. If you were working for a corporate company or even for a public lab for that matter, it wouldn't necessarily be possible. So yes, creating a startup can be a lot of work, but it can also be a great way to keep control of your life. So a few other pointers from uh, that presentation is that yes, researchers can be startupers. You often will need some help. That's normal because you cannot know everything about everything. That's why we do, when we say we, it's Connectus, Semia, among others, will help you with IP, will help you with business, will help you potentially find partners and all of that. So what's important is that really, if you're interested, that you ask. Also, it's really okay to try different paths, especially if you follow your values. Benoit has always wanted to work in environmental issues. He came too early at first during his master's. He came back at it during his PhD and now he's able to work at it by having created a startup around it. It was also very important for him as a doctoral student to manage his time and mature your PhD was a way to um, keep focusing on his thesis while also looking at other things around him and wider. And he said that was a great way to balance it too and to not get lost into the rabbit hole of a thesis where you just don't know where to stop, that the material your PhD, IP classes, business exchanges, discussion with the incubators also gave him new ideas because they refreshed him in a way. And of course, as I've already said, using parallel skills such as internship and so on can also be a great way uh, to, to really increase your, your potential and your knowledge. So I'll now move on to uh, what is the Mature Your PhD challenge? 
we're really getting to the core of it. You probably have a, quite a few ideas now what it is, but this is a way for your thesis to potentially become a technology that you will activate in a startup. So let's go for the video. Now, the video is pretty dense in information, but uh, as you've seen, there's a link. You can go on the Mature Your PhD website and replay it as many times as you want. And of course, information is also in writing. So just really quickly again, the job of Connectus is to help researchers at the realization labs to turn their discoveries, if they wish to, into technologies. We invest in the proof of concept, we look at IP, and we work with the researcher over 18, 24 months. We invest several hundred thousand euros to turn the discovery into an invention by doing prototypes, by doing proof of concept, that kind of things. So that after that, it can really become a very efficient, quickly growing startup or be transferred to a company. When you're a PhD, technically, you are not at that stage yet where you do have a discovery that's part of the lab work. However, you're working towards it. That's the whole concept of a thesis normally. And as such, uh, the idea of Mature Your PhD is to help you to, uh, so that your thesis can become a discovery, a technology, and eventually a product. So Mature Your PhD is open to second and third year PhD student. If you're first or fourth, you can still contact us. Normally you are not eligible, but we can already start looking at whether you can apply next year or if you're fourth year students, if there are potential exemptions. So don't hesitate to contact us in any case. However, if you're doing a CIFR thesis or a thesis basically in collaboration with the private companies because of legal rules, uh, those are not eligible. The benefits. Well, as we said, it's mostly about training at first, but also to give you a springboard and an overlook, a springboard so that your thesis, once it's completed and you're working, you study, you continue work with the lab, can already move onto that maturation process that I mentioned, and also an outlook so you can better see where it will go. And so you can learn new skills that will help you with that in market and business, in IP, and in entrepreneurship. Once your thesis is completed and you've applied to mature your PhD with the agreement of your thesis director, then 
you can be considered as part of the lab and we can go into the core of the connectus process, which is to mature, to develop, to do the proof of concept of the thesis. And when I say that we invest money, normally about half of that money is invested in the lab and it often includes hiring the postdoctoral student to keep working, not to do research, but to do research and development. So to keep bringing a uh, concrete element to that discovery so it can move towards becoming a technology, i.e. that during the duration of that process, it's quite possible that you can be employed with uh, Connectus funding to keep working on your thesis topic, which is really awesome. Next one. So basically, there you have it. Material PhD is to help you keep control of your thesis to turn it into something concrete and therefore to help you create a job either as an employee, if uh, the path chosen is to transfer that technology to an existing company or to create a startup. In practice, you have until March 21st, that's about six weeks to apply. That's about seven pages. Honestly, it's really not super long. Uh, it's relatively simple. It's really to describe why you're standing at, what are your topics, so that they can be a jury. Uh, the, man, the agreement of your thesis director is obviously mandatory. Uh, if there's any trouble with that, you can always contact us and we can see how we can help as well. But it's obviously very important because when you keep working after, it will be with the lab. So he will stay, he or she, of course, will stay involved. Then by April, we review uh, the files on several socioeconomic criteria. And finally, in June, there is a jury where uh, the pre-selected candidates will have to pitch in front of that review board, that jury, for a 15-minute presentation uh, and as much in questions and answers, after which the laureates will then be nominated and accompanied. And uh, now to give you a, really a, a testimony, a very interesting testimony of uh, a material PhD laureate from 2020, I would like to introduce uh, Aya Aloui, who will uh, take over. Thank you very much, Aya. Thank you for this introduction. Uh, I will present to you today how I uh, boosted my PhD uh, working with the uh, Connectus team. So before, uh, this is, I will present you briefly my journey uh, through university. Uh, I started doing it with a PASES, which some of you are probably familiar with. Uh, it's an entry exam to, to pharmacy. And uh, I became a pharmacy student. I finished my uh, pharmacy uh, degree. Uh, doctorate, and then I did my PhD at the University of Strasbourg. I worked as a PhD student on materials chemistry, and especially biomaterials. And I will explain to you what was exactly my project in the next slide. Uh, afterwards, I worked, uh, and now I work as a postdoctoral research on the maturation project at BIPAD with the University of Strasbourg, and of course with my uh, within my uh, two labs that uh, received me during my PhD, which is biomaterial and bioengineering, and uh, three bio team. So my project, to stay simple, the name of the project is Albupad. We make, it's a green technology for making uh, materials from protein. As you can see here in the picture, there, these are some of the materials that we make. Uh, my project started, uh, the, the, very, the discoveries happened on the very first months of my PhD uh, during the first year. Uh, afterwards, uh, we, we had very, very interesting results. So by my second year of PhD, we had the first contact with, con with Connectus. And this is when the magic happened. This is when we started seeing uh, my, well, I started seeing my results instead of being just results to be published to a potential uh, product that can maybe someday, I mean, hopefully land on the market. But by the beginning of my first year, we already had uh, submitted our uh, patent. And uh, by the end of my last year, third year of PhD, I did the project, I did the mature your PhD uh, challenge, which I will explain to you later uh, how, how it went exactly. At the same time, Albupad started after our contact with Connectus and the IP filing, uh, the pre-maturation project, which is a fine, uh, Connectus actually financed my project into uh, with this pre-maturation phase. 
that allowed us to work more on proof on the proof of concept. And that also allowed that today we are on the maturation phase and we are pretty advanced uh, thanks to the help of Cornelius. So why did I mature my PhD? For me personally, I wanted to push my project to grow. My project was like my child. It, was a discovery that happened in my lab in my lab that I came across. And I wanted to see this project grow and leave potentially the nest of the lab and become a, a potential product that can actually help people. Uh, I also did this project because I, uh, this challenge because I wanted to challenge myself and learn because my comfort zone is science. I like to do science, I like to do experiments. And I think all of you, but I, there's a little bit of excitement and fear when it comes to, uh, to some to things that I don't know, uh, such as uh, being an entrepreneur, and I wanted to challenge myself and learn. I also wanted to confront my results to business experts, because we tend to present our work all the time as PhDs in front of other scientists like us. So I wanted to uh, present it in front of business people and see how they think, what they think of uh, this potential discovery. I also uh, wanted to take a first step in entrepreneurship. So uh, how did I do it? Uh, I think the, first, the most important part is to have a PhD. That's the most difficult part about maturing your PhD. And I think all of you already uh, have, I mean, you're doing a PhD, that's why you're here. Uh, the second uh, important part is to have an idea, to have this idea and uh, discuss it with your thesis director, with your supervisor. This is really important because you need to have to establish this trust and uh, transparency with your supervisor and he's going to be supporting you. You need his support to uh, push your project to grow and turn this idea into actually a project. The fourth step is to meet with Connexus which happened very easily because, uh, I mean, from my own experience after, of course, after the fact, uh, now that I've been a postdoc for like a, more than a year, Connectus is one of the best in France, if not the best. And uh, the, the, the lucky part is that Connectuses are very, very involved in, uh, in our life as PhDs. And you will see them, you will have uh, you will have courses by uh, Connectus people, for example, the courses uh, about uh, IP, you will, you will see them, you will see them somewhere, and they're very open and easy to talk to. So this is, uh, these four steps happened. Then uh, in the next slide, uh, I uh, was just like you today, I prepared my application file. So I uh, thought about uh, what application is for my materials that are made entirely out of protein? What is the market? And just thinking of these two things is very, very important because it, push, it pushed me away from my comfort zone. Uh, it's also important at this step that you don't forget to address IP. It's very important to start talking about your IP to protect your, your invention and protect your results, uh, of course, before communicating and before publishing. And this is very important. So there are the file part, which is a very easy document to write, but like it's important to uh, not leave it at the last minute because there are some points where you need to actually think beyond and like and ask yourself questions that you don't usually ask yourself uh, during your PhD. The second part is to convince the jury. And this is a beautiful person trying to convince, uh, convince the jury. The jury is very nice and they have very, very good questions for you. And they have another uh, way of seeing things, which can be a very um, interesting experience by itself. The outcome of this challenge is it was a very good learning opportunity for me. I learned so much and I was able to progress so much uh, thanks to this challenge. Uh, it, was, it allowed me to valorize my work beyond just the publication, beyond the, just the science. It also allowed me to do my first pitch and present my work differently. Uh, to, just to uh, tell you how it happened, that my presentation happened a week after my thesis event, which happened in uh, September 2020. So a week after, I was like a week before, I was presenting my, my work in my 
PhD defense as science. And now I am presenting it as a technology, and that is very, very enriching experience. Uh, it's also mature my P mature your PhD is a very good way to network and to meet new people. That's very important. Whatever you do, whatever you choose to do after your PhD, whether you choose to the academic route or the industrial route, you need to know people and you need to build a network. And that is very, very important. Uh, mature your PhD also allowed me to uh, have an initiation to entrepreneurship and prepare me for uh, IPG that came afterwards, which was the second step for me to uh, as an entrepreneur. Next slide, please. Thank you. So uh, I did uh, a year a, a year after exactly. I did the IPHD uh, national competition by BPI France and. It allowed me to take the next step to uh, entrepreneurship. This competition is made to boost PhD con candidates who are interested specifically in entrepreneurship. And I did it because I, by that, by that point, I had a first taste of uh, the entrepreneur adventure and I wanted more. And also I was thinking of creating my own job. Uh, the way I did it is I uh, built with uh, Sat Quinnictus and with my supervisor, a project that has real potential and in, uh, industrial applications. And uh, of course, for this project, you need your uh, Sat support. You need the document that says the Sat supports you because that shows that the experts have proven that you have, uh, that your project has potential as uh, a product on the market potential. And I was Laureate uh, IPHD. So these are a few tips uh, after doing all that. Uh, these are a few tips uh, for you. Maybe if you're interested in doing this, uh, this challenge, make sure to have the support of your supervisor. This is very, very important because you are going to work with your supervisor because your supervisor has a lot of insight. He has, he has probably, in my case, I was very lucky because my supervisor already is uh, working in the, with startups but you need the support of your supervisor no matter what. It's very, very valuable. Also, prepare your pitch and adapt it to your audience. Uh, you do not expect to present to the, to the day of the competition to present your work just as you present it to other scientists. Science is important, but now you need to think technology, you need to think application, you need to think market. Do not forget about the economical Try to start investigating your market and start investigating your applications and thinking about, about that. So yeah, think about, definitely think about your application and your market. It's very important. And uh, don't do everything in the last minute, <laughs> of course, because uh, it's important to be prepared. It's a great experience, but great experiences, you're able to enjoy them and to learn more from them if you uh, are well prepared. So do not let, any, let everything last minute and definitely ask for advice. Uh, we are so lucky to be in Alsace and have the support of uh, Seth Quinnictus that just as I told you are very, very involved and they're very close uh, and they're very open to talk to you. So please uh, go and ask for their advice. And that's exactly what I did. I, I, talked, to, uh, I talked to them and they supported me and helped me through, for example, the application IBHD, I had the support of uh, experts in uh, Quinnictus that helped me write my, my file and actually uh, win the, the challenge. Thank you uh, very much for your attention and please feel free to ask me questions. If there's one last thing I could say is if you want, if you're interested into uh, in this challenge, go for it. You have absolutely nothing to lose and everything to win and everything to learn. This is a one of a kind challenge and do not miss this opportunity no matter what. Well, thank you very much, Aya. I think you put it in uh, words uh, in a much more impressive fashion than I did. So <laughs> thank you very much. So everyone just keep in mind, here's the information. You have the website where you can download the application form. You can also contact us at the Challenge My PhD email address that you see here. Write it down. Uh, there will be a replay of the webinar that will be available to and uh, sent to you as well. So don't forget, 
you have the information right there. You can contact us and you have about six weeks to apply. Really doesn't take that long if you're interested. So I believe now that we are opening the field for questions and answer. And yeah, do not uh, forget if you want to answer the satisfaction, sorry, satisfaction survey, it'll help us make us uh, uh, the next presentation even better. Yeah, so <clears throat> there was one question by Quentin who asked if it does always take six, seven years to create a startup. I think he was referring to the example that he made before. No, it's the, so yes, the, the example I show you is um, uh, special uh, startups which uh, I work on the, the biotech field, uh, which is very uh, long uh, domain uh, to put uh, your product on the market. Um, for example, with the regulatory affair, uh, when you add uh, a new molecule, uh, it takes at least eight years to put the molecule on the market because you need, you need to, to take uh, preclinical studies, uh, clinical studies, and so on and so on. Uh, you have some fast tracks, uh, like we have seen with the COVID-19, <laughs> but <laughs> in many cases, um, it's take this time. But uh, it's not always uh, uh, as long as uh, say seven or eight years. It depends on the technology you work uh, on. Yeah. Uh, for example, the example of Benoit, for example, yeah. Yeah. He, he did a thesis from 2016 to 2020, was a low rate of material PhD in 2019, created his startup in 2021, and it's now sustaining his job and he is considering about growing. So it create, in his case, he already had uh, the, the algorithm, you had to feed it data. So it was really a matter of creating the company and yeah. getting to work. Yeah, you have the, all the, the startups uh, that works on the digital field uh, for services or with algorithm a simple algorithm, uh, not a very complex IA or with GAN and so on, but uh, you can put uh, it rapidly on the market. So we, there, this type of project are called go to market <laughs> for some reason. Uh, but uh, in fact, if you work on the very uh, uh, green tech, industrial, uh, pharmaceutical uh, products, it will take longer. This is why we call uh, all of this project deep tech project and uh, they are characterized by some uh, which is called uh, very capitalistic uh, programs because you need to to have enough funds to go on the market and to live until you can uh, gain some uh, some money yes and um, i'm reading the chat it depends on the field now some uh, biotech startup have been created really quickly after the thesis it's just that in order for them to really generate revenues it takes a longer time. So in the meantime, they normally survive by, uh, as Eve mentioned, by fundraising, either from a venture capitalist, but also with uh, subsidies from public entities, which is a normal uh, development path for biotech. But biotech are really some of the most particular startups out here. There are two types of time. You have to wait six or seven years to get a job at that start. <laughs> the job is still there. You continue developing the molecule. Yeah, there are two types of time. Yeah. There are the time before uh, startup creation, which is more focused on the science part, uh, the research part, and not the development part. And, and there is the time when you create the startups. And uh, you need to, to focus on the product and to transform really your research your, into a, a real product. Uh, AIA already uh, started uh, <laughs> this phase uh, without already creating the startup. But uh, uh, it's what we do at Connectus uh, to help before uh, the creation of the startup, because which is very important is when you create the company, uh, the time is running because you have a lot of um, uh, public grants uh, that can, you, you can uh, obtain only uh, in uh, m uh, at least uh, six uh, months or uh, not uh, passing one year uh, after the creation. So this is why we don't like to create uh, startups too early. Um, thank you. Uh, so I think there are, uh, so uh, okay, there are not other questions, but I have some. 
<clears throat> so uh, is the is the challenge open to PhD students of all disciplines? Do we have examples of other like AIA comes from the let's say what what the, the one calls hard sciences, but are there other kinds of um, um, fields? Um, I mean, are there winners from other kinds of fields? Uh, yes, absolutely. As you mentioned, Benoit is obviously one example. It what matters is that it does need to be transferable, for sure. So there needs to be social economic potential. Not every project needs to become a unicorn. Not every project is in biotech, for sure. The basics is that it needs to have a potential to be self-sustaining and hopefully to develop itself. But it can be really in a lot of different fields. We've had this example of geography using algorithm and data points. And in Benoit, for example, is relatively technically minded, but he's not a programmer at heart. So he was able to develop it nonetheless. So yes, absolutely. We've had some other example like this. It's true that hard sciences are more common, but it would definitely very open to others. I, I personally come from a, a legal business and a sociology background, and many of us are connected to that as well. And yes, we, we have example on a psychology field also. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, uh, to to create some profile, uh, it's uh, very uh, useful for, for all the social media, for example, to find the, the correct path to go, to touch you. <laughs> so you have all different fields. Uh, and if you have questions about um, the value on the market that can represent, we are here to help you uh, for that. Okay. We've seen, uh, to give you some example, there's a... Um, uh, there's, a, there's a trade show called Innovatives SHS, as is in human sciences, that had lots of interesting startup uh, from academia in those fields. For example, one was working with uh, education for autistic children by using applications on, uh, on tablets to really help them develop uh, better. Uh, there was another that was, um, a lot of them are designed for sports, for example, analyzing sports performance or recovering from injuries. There really are a lot of examples in, in all those fields that quite often now are using the digital means in order to for the solutions to be applicable to the public at large and therefore to have an economic model. Okay, thank you. And uh, maybe another question is, uh, um, at what stage uh, should your PhD project be? Uh, in order to apply to the to the to the challenge material PhD, what age is in how old? What, what, what stage? PhD? Stage, sorry. Stage. Yes. Stage. Well, normally it's second or third year of the yeah. thesis, because at the first you are normally just starting it, so it's also quite difficult for you at that stage to have results that are strong enough to justify applying yet. While well, second and third year normally you are really in the middle of your work, you know pretty much where you're going to be headed. And at the same time, you still have enough flexibility in how your thesis could evolve so that it's a perfect time for that. I don't know, AI, if you want to uh, add something. Yes, uh, in my case, we uh, we contacted Connectus when we had enough, uh, in, my sp in the specific case of biomaterials, we had enough uh, characterization of our biomaterial. We understood the technology and we understood how it worked. And we also had the first uh, in vitro on in cells uh, biological uh, results. This is when we actually started, uh, contacted uh, said connectors. It, it depends also um, on the previous work of your research team. If they already work on the, the field from uh, one, two, or three years earlier than your PhD. Uh, no, no, absolutely. In my case, absolutely not. Actually, no, the, no, no, the, no, the, not, the, not in your case, in general no. case, uh, if uh, you are, uh, not, not you, I, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I know that in general case, if you are in a, a research team that work also already on the, on the technology uh, where you do your, your PhD. Uh, it can be faster uh, if you have already data on previous work, but <laughs> I know. And um, 
but but uh, for the for the challenge itself of course i mean uh, aya applied the, to the challenge after that she had the so that she contacted you before actually applying to the challenge material PhD, but practically for the challenge uh, do you have already to have a, like a proof of concept of a, what of your of a product or is it something that can be defined afterwards how what the, how how does it work uh, the application in this case well if you have a proof of concept for a product and your second year of thesis that is really pretty damn impressive so no we not we, if you do by all means absolutely apply like you have something already amazing most people will, and that's perfectly normal, take a lot more time. And normally a thesis is not even about getting a proof of concept. It's more an idea that could then become a proof of concept later. And that's what we're normally looking for. That's at this stage. But we can do also a direct transfer. If you have already the product, we can do that from side to a company. <laughs> so with you of course so don't hesitate to contact us with this but not for the <laughs> for the challenge and is it, is it possible so to contact you through the through the email of a challenge my phd to have an appointment to discuss the 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 project of the of the phd student and if it is feasible for the challenge material phd to I'm not sure I understood the question. Can you just repeat it? If, if it is possible to, to have an appointment with someone from Connectus to discuss about the project um, and if it is uh, applicable uh, and if you can apply, let's say, to the, to the well, um, challenge yes. material PhD. Okay. Depending how many, I mean, we'll answer as much as we can. I'll be honest, if we have hundreds of queries, we may not be able to answer everything. And in that case, the best idea is actually to apply. Worst case scenario is that you will have spent one hour or two hours filling out the form and uh, you're going to be rejected. That's really the worst case scenario. But it's always uh, better because there's a high chance that you may be accepted and that it may lead to uh, really interesting things. If you have doubts on how, you, on how to do it in particular, yes, by all means, do contact us rather than polishing it aside and not finishing it. That would be our advice. But we made it really as practical uh, and quick to fill out as possible. The idea is not to generate hours and hours of extra work and research, but more really to, uh, to pour a little heart into it, but not much time. Okay, thank you. Um, bye. I encourage you to, to put your questions in the chat if you have any. On my side, I... I had uh, I had my answers. Thank you. We don't bite. <laughs> so don't hesitate. If you are um, not aware, uh, we have also uh, an event uh, earlier uh, April. I think the twelfth April, uh, Antoine, which is called uh, the Catcher um, yes. event. Uh, with the, the yes, with the deep tech tool uh, from BPI, it will be a, uh, I think a, a good event uh, to do. It's after the, the closing of the application, of course. But uh, I encourage if you are interesting uh, in this uh, yeah. in this world of uh, entrepreneurship. It's a, it's a one day, yeah, it's a one day event on yeah. April twelfth. Can mark your calendar, uh, and it's called Innovation Day. Uh, I will look and uh, put the link in the chat while we talk uh, basically it's an event for about innovation in general in the upper rhine so not just for unistra and uasha but also uh, german universities but it's very there's going to be a bunch of round table about technology readiness levels uh, about innovating in europe about how to transfer technologies so if you have some time by all means do go uh, many of the um, the events will also be uh, recorded so you can watch it later and that give you a good idea of that world of tech transfer startups and innovation nice thing uh, aya will do a, a speech no <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, i look forward to that with the iphd uh, hat this time <laughs> <laughs> I do a pitch also so the, in the team creation 
uh, of the startups. There you go. The link is in the chat now. It's a, it would be an interesting event with the three national uh, teams. And it should be lots of fun. And I believe they should be an interesting uh, evening as well. So all the more reason to come. There will be a barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm not sure, but there'll be something and it should be fun depending on, of course, on the uh, health situation as well. Because if we put uh, food on the table, uh, we'll be, we, we will have a lot of students. <laughs> That's how it works. Not just students for that matter. Normally I'm showing up at those too. It works for me. <laughs> so right, everyone, if any of you wants to ask one last question, now's the moment. And uh, otherwise, I will thank you all very much first to all uh, the attendees for your attention, uh, for hopefully your interest. And uh, obviously, I would like to thank all the participants, uh, Aya, Yves, Luca, France, Merveille for